Mm -hmm. Hello there, I'm Anthony, I'm Regional Sales Manager at Rockenberger here in the UK, and welcome to our Gas App Live Lounge. Rather than me jibber-jabbering on, I thought we'd get a couple of experts uh, in with me to discuss some of our tools. Keep going. Are we still going? Yeah? All, all good? Keep going. Can they hear me? So we'll give it a couple of minutes now, uh, just in case more people want to join us. Uh, don't forget, please tell people it's also on YouTube as well as the Gas app and Plum app as well. Should we go out and test it? Yeah. We're just going to give it a few minutes. <laughs> I think you've fired five up for once you've been you know, you that. That's a point, yeah. No, that's mad on So five one two if you can get off. Well if you can't hear us, we're just checking a few things waiting on some people signing in. Yeah, a few things waiting on some people. Oh we're all good, I can hear myself. <laughs> that don't set the horn. <laughs> Never seen a man look so good. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we're sending you our headphones. Someone's getting tight in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> so right, so I'm guessing that you've heard everything I said earlier now. So rather than me jibber jabbering on about our gear, <laughs> I thought we'd get these two guys to come and help me. Uh, know them very well. They came to Germany with me to come and have a look at Rottenberger head office. So we're going to ask some questions, play with some tools, do some giveaways. And we've also got a winner we need to announce on behalf of Gasser, uh, who's going to win one of all our LED new range. So I'm going to go straight into the questions. Sorry, I should introduce people, shouldn't I? This is Ryan Mills from Edinburgh, and this is Lee Brown from Huddersfield. I dare say you actually know them more than you know me, so I won't go on too much about that, but we can get them to introduce themselves a bit more later on if necessary. Shall I carry on with the questions? Yeah, okay, yeah, go for it, yeah. So, guys, if you had to recommend one tool in front of you, not to the side, uh, <laughs> what would it be? Um, and that's from a gym. Uh, Ryan, you go first, mate. Well, there's a lot of tools here that I would certainly recommend, but obviously price varies between them all. So if I had to go into one where I would say everybody can kind of afford, for me, I'll go for the twin cut. So it was up to 42 mil. A lot of people say they can't get a hold of it. Basically, what you want to do when you're on debt five, debt two or uh, debt five or forty two, so you put it in, score it, then hold it down and then ratchet. So if I show you now, you put it on, put it in, score, release, and then start ratcheting. It's easy as that. Simple, nice clean cut. And that's probably the tool I would recommend. So I'm going to go a little bit different um, in conjunction with Kane is the thermal imaging camera. I've had mine for about a year now. And I've used it a few times and it's got me out of a few sticky situations. Not as cheap as <coughs> some of the tools, but it is something that I certainly, if it broke, I would buy it again to put it back in my kit. Cool. The other thing with the twin cut as well, the reason why it's called the twin cut is up to 22 mil. It's a direct cut, so save yourself a lot of time if you're cutting anything under those sizes, okay? Thank you very much. What, what? You give away the gloves. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so we're also, we decided, um, obviously Gas App are doing a giveaway with our LED lamps. We're also going to give away five sets of gloves for uh, anybody with good questions, so we'll pick Five random. Still time to send your questions in, by yeah, the way. Please send, send in questions. We've got some here, but also Sam and George are on the other side and they will come up with some questions for us if you send them in. Okay, so I'll start with you, Lee, this time on this one. What's your main areas of work? What do you enjoy most and least? And that's come from Steve Davis. <laughs> that's Steve Davis. Um, most of my work is probably commercial, probably about 70% commercial, 30% domestic. Um, what do I enjoy most? I enjoy just being in a plant room and making a nice job. <clears throat> um, the bigger job I enjoy most. What do I dislike? 
um, probably merchants that let us down when we've got a set, like if you do a hotel, you shut it down for two or three days. There's nothing worse than the stuff not turning up the week before or anything like that. Then you're running around trying to get the stuff. Yeah. So it, it's as much as we can do our planning, it's it's other people letting us down. So that's beyond your control, but I just love being in the plant room. Okay. Yourself, so me also, <coughs> based up in Edinburgh, and my work is mainly domestic. So um, the job I probably dislike the most is bathrooms, and I've now just been like, I ain't getting involved in bathrooms. I just despise them <coughs> uh, and jobs i love i love full heating systems it's, yeah that's what i love but at the end of the day it's tiring it's time consuming especially if it's a fully furnished house so the job i probably love the most is actually a straightforward combi swap on a friday with the boilers on the same bracket walk all the pipes line all all the part, uh, it has to be dead dead simple and yeah who doesn't love a job like that Okay, oh, another one from Steve. Uh, what is your background and how did you get into the trade? No, I'll, 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 I'll go in the end. So um, I've been doing this 17 years now, work with my dad. So I finished school, came home to a bag of tools, she said, start in the morning, I'm still here. Uh, I enjoy it. During the winter, I can't say I like it as much, just cold, dark, wet, it's just a miserable, I'd rather that, be in that, an that, office. That's summer in Scotland. <laughs> summer <laughs> as well. We get sun about three weeks of the year, but, uh, it's only about 12 degrees. I um, always wanted to be a policeman, that's what I fancied growing up, but I'm being honest, I think I'd be corrupt. I'd, be, <laughs> I'd definitely be one of the corrupt cops, I'd be, pull, I'd be pulling people over. Not liking the look of the car, whatever, breaking a light and then booking them for a broken light. So, uh, yeah, that's <laughs> not what I do anyway. If I'm being honest, that's the sort of cop I would be, you know. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm being honest there. Yeah. Probably best thing to put Yeah, oh, yeah. Right. <laughs> yourself, please. Do you, do you not need to say any disclaimers or anything? <laughs> so, uh, uh, mine is I just I came out of the armed forces, um, started in a past, past an apprenticeship. I did not enjoy it, but. I just thought there was more to life than this. I thought it was very hard work manually. And <clears> the <throat> plumbing lecturer, uh, I latched on with him, went working with him on the weekends, and then he swapped the courses over, and I've, I've been doing it ever since 25, 26 years or something like that. Too long to remember, put it that way. <laughs> okay. So, so I had a question related to that. Okay. Uh, Billy has asked, he, said, he says, um, I'm a recently qualified domestic gas engineer. What advice would you give uh, to newly qualified engineers? Pick a different trade. Yeah. <laughs> 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 <Become policy. laughs> no, well, it depends really what quickly like, if you're looking to gain work as a gas engineer, target the new builds. Get your name in there, get flyers in there, because these new the new builds are going up at a ridiculous rate all over the country. Everybody's got a gas boiler, even though we're meant to be coming away from that. They all need to have them serviced. So for me, that is where you want to get in if you want to be earning money and getting repetitive work, get into the new builds, and then you'll find you'll get work, venture away from that through recommendations. I'd probably say try and latch on to a decent domestic engineer in your area if you can subcontract to him, if he or she can come on your jobs and vice versa. I think if you're newly qualified, even me now, and I'm sure Ryan would agree after 20 odd years, we're still learning stuff now, we don't know it all. But I found if if you've got a relationship, and I've got a couple of good mates, uh, Drew and Damien, that I work with on a regular basis, I don't know anything, but I know if I've got a problem or something I'm not sure if I can speak to them in between as we'll, we'll come up with a method of work, making it work. So try and build that relationship. Don't walk into a merchant's and be that guy that looks down at the floor, doesn't talk to anybody. No, talk to them, make some good contacts. Mm -hmm. I think a good contact in the industry is, is worth its weight in gold. Okay, um, this is from Sam. What do you think makes a good manufacturer? Nice colour. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm an Arsenal fan, so <laughs> <yeah. laughs> don't want you good as. <laughs> but um, for me, the service has to be good. That's the bottom line. If the service is poor, actually, you're going to get nowhere. You know, everyone has their problems. Something fails. You know, that's the way it is. It happens with everything. But if they can deal with it and deal with it quickly and well, then for me, <clears> that yeah. makes a difference. We've had that conversation this afternoon. No. <laughs> There's no manufacturer, not even Rottenberger, makes everything perfect. Sorry, no. 
No. <laughs> well, it, it's it's the it is it's the after service, and for, for me, that's what you're buying. You're buying the after service. Anybody can put a product on a table. It's if something goes wrong with it. What does that manufacturer do? You know, I recently had it with. Well, I'm not going to say it. It's baiting. I'll tell you. It's with with <laughs> another manufacturer over a product that they've done, and they're very popular on social media, but. We've contacted them via emails three or four times and they're just not replied to the email. So now I deliver they won't buy their products. You know, all I want them to do is fix the products that we've bought yeah. and put it right. To bury your hand in, head in the sand and ignore it, yeah. it is far worse than the product itself um, because now I won't buy that product. If anybody asks me my recommendation of my product, I will just say mm. no because the after service isn't there. Yeah, it's the biggest thing to me. I'll even answer one there as well. I've spent 50 or well, 20 years on the tools before we're doing this. And one thing I'll say is what I brought over into my sales career with Rothenberger is customer service first because that will breed the sales. So that's always been first and foremost in my brain. Okay. Um, what size? This is one for, well, for all of us. I think you two have got them as well. The pipe cut mini, the new CIS battery one. Oh, I can bring it round if you wish. Marvellous one. Uh, yeah, what oh, size? The question from Lloyd Stafford. A quick one for you as well. Lloyd Stafford on Instagram. Hope you're here, Lloyd. Hello. Uh, funny guy, you have to you have to <laughs> follow him. LWL Heating, I believe. Just some cracking jokes. But yeah, so Go on, mate, you crack on. It holds you a rose sat between two thorns. Thank, thank you, Lloyd. Let's <laughs> <laughs> to a drink. So this will go up to four inch. Can I style 110 mil? 110 mil. I still want, I want my dad, so four inch. <laughs> but you'll go through cast iron, steel, copper, whatever you want, put on there, timber. It comes with a universal blade, so it'll go through pretty much anything. You can get to where the circular saw comes off, put onto a track if you want to cut up. Floorboards, whatnot, as Anne's demonstrating. They come with the track. <laughs> <Come on. laughs> Opens up easily. Insert the pipe. You can put in the MA N10 rod as well. Easily cut through it. You'll see here you've got rollers, which helps with cutting through the pipe work. Yeah. You all know it's a bang on about. It works on the CES Cordless Alliance battery platform. So, you know, if you're on the tabo, um, battery platform, for instance, you won't need to buy any batteries for this. And metal batteries will go straight into it. Absolutely, there's a lot of other brands what you'll see coming out from uh, the continent where if, when they start coming into the UK, you're going to be wowed by them, including Mayful, is one what springs to mind. A lot to do with this tool here. Okay, um, what's the battery life? Oh, it's Lloyd again. What's the battery life on the rechargeable work lamp? from full charge and is there a charger available for the van? So I believe what Lloyd's talking about is going to be... Yeah, well that's USB so we yeah. put it straight into the van, it's no bother. And I'll do it over that way, but very, very bright and really good value for money. I would say on most of my demo days the real, there's a bit of a wow factor about them for the value for money. Uh, well, I think you'll get about. I don't mind. I don't mind running for about three hours under a <coughs> under a, uh, uh, a bottle. I don't know what the maximum is, but I've had my for three hours. You know, last year a good chunk of the day anyway, but it depends on the brightness you've got. And obviously, if you've got a maximum, it's not going to last as long. Yeah. If you've got yeah. it's dimmer, it's it's going to last longer, obviously. But um, we also did a battery one as well. Uh, obviously, it depends on the quality of the batteries. But I think we say about five hours runtime with that one, mm -hmm. and the list price is about twenty-four quid on the uh, rechargeable well, work. That for me, that's better than no brain or that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And it's also uh, going to call it a, a charger as well. Okay. Yeah, so quickly on the um, pipe cut mini. Oh yeah. yes. We had a quick question saying uh, roughly how much it cost and would it cost. Would it cut cast iron? Yeah, we'll cut yeah. cast iron. I've yes, done it, no bother. And it goes through in seconds. You can get different blades for it as well. It, yeah, it comes absolutely. with the unit. <coughs> yeah, comes with the universal one, but there is a couple of different blades you can put. Yeah, you get one for stainless steel and steel itself, but the universal one we've all cut through uh, cast iron with it. And there's videos of yeah, on my Instagram I fire through cast with it. It's yeah, really impressive. Absolutely. Okay. So my my mum, hello mum. My mum says we're not allowed to laugh when we say Steve Davis. 
Oh, <laughs> she just texted me. <laughs> uh, did you have a rough, do you know the rough cost? Or? <clears throat> of, oh, off the top of my head, I, I don't really know list price. You're probably talking about 1100 1200 pounds. Uh, but obviously, you've got the cast battery and Quite importantly, you get the bonus points as well. So if you buy any of currently, if you buy any of the bigger items, I think we also do them in super fires, but obviously you will get more points uh, for the more you spend. And it's like a loyalty program, and I believe you get enough points to get a spare four app battery for the product as well. You know, but points be brave. <laughs> when, when is on about the cast battery for them that have been living in Mars for the last 12 months that don't know what the battery is? Basically, the cast battery fits all the tool range. That, that's in that range. So, like the press gun here, pipe threader over there, uh, the rodding machines over there, that one battery fits them all. And it's CAS Cordless Alliance system. Um, just look it up. They've got a great website and you can see all the different brands on there. I think there's about 50 now. Well, just to be 50 this year yeah, on that yeah. platform. They definitely talked about it getting up to 50 or so. Uh, we've got, I mean, in our book, it still says we're saying about 17. But we know for a fact there's over 20 now, and then yeah, well, 25 when we went to Germany, yeah. weren't it? Absolutely. Okay, this is um, <laughs> from Rick P. Which one of you is best, and why? <coughs> You're talking about these two, so <laughs> I would say me. But guys, fight it out amongst yourselves. No. You've got the saw, mate. However, it was this way. <laughs> I think it's different. I, I thought you were actually going to answer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so they're both very good. I'll give them both for that. Okay, so when are the Romax Compact TT angled jaws? This is off Patricia Curtis. Hi, Pat. Remember meeting you at Installer. Uh, when the M type coming out, and if so, which sizes will they come out with? And the price guide currently, it's to, we're still waiting to hear, but we're told it's definitely coming this year. You will have it's not angled jaws, it's press rings. So you'll have a effectively an actuator, and then you'll have rings in there which will go to whichever angle you need. But it's gonna be a game changer. Watch this space. Yeah, yeah it's coming, but watch this space. But I'd be lying if I had a date for you. Okay, uh good evening. <laughs> uh, I'm thinking about buying a Rothenberger Romax Compact TT. 15, 22, 28, the end profile press jaw set. Can these be used under floor for gas pipes? And are these, sorry, and as these are not accessible joints and are classed as mechanical joints, and this is from mm -hmm. a Stephen Murphy. I know well, you've got a well, back TT and you've yeah, got the right. I can tool. answer that in that. Gas safe sit right on the fence of this one. It's classed as a mechanical joint, but you'll know, I know, <coughs> we know it's not a mechanical joint. Once it's pressed, it's done. It mucking about. I've put gas under a floor. I know loads of people have done it. And it's, I wouldn't worry about it. I wouldn't lose any sleep over it. <coughs> like I say, gas safe won't say yes, they won't say no. They just say, oh, well, <coughs> it's, if it's mechanical, you can. But I wouldn't, yeah, I wouldn't have a problem with doing what it. What I would say on that when I speak to whoever's uh, fittings you're pressing, so whether it's Gornex, M Press, Peg or whatever, mm -hmm. check with them. I know I checked with M Press when we first did it years back and they were quite happy for it so that, that's yeah. good enough but if the manufacturer's happy i'm happy yeah uh, and that's a good point actually the press fitting manufacturers in that case are a good point of contact okay uh i've got one here from tim loves dawn forever um <laughs> i think this is an off an in office joke uh with ourselves is a spider an insect or an arachnid i think it depends on how many legs they've got i think a spider has got eight legs anything on that guys mm. Anyway, <laughs> uh, next question. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> uh, we have had quite a good one from Paul at Myra. Um, oh, Paul McGuire, my old mucker. How you doing, Paul? Paul. <laughs> That's not what you said earlier. <laughs> <laughs> he says, what are your thoughts about renewable technologies and how easy or difficult is it for small and smaller businesses to diversify into these? Good okay. question. Well, I... Th no, I'm joking. You too. <laughs> <laughs> well, be honest, I... I think I'll be retired and gas boilers will still be kicking about. Yeah. There's no doubt about that. I'm only 34. We've got a long way to go. But, um, unless I win the lottery, the tools will be off the bridge. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> but renewables for me now should be in the new builds now. Why we're still doing gas in them, I don't understand when they say we should be moving on with the times. But like where I come from, Edinburgh, we've got 
hundred year old tenement flats. They're not even allowed to put double glazing on the outside because it mucks up the character of the building. Do they want you to be energy efficient? It's nothing adds up. You're not putting an SR seat pump there tonight. No, <laughs> no. You know, imagine putting an air source on the outside of the building, plus it's not going to be insulated well enough. And yeah, I don't think it's going to take off. I'm not worried about it. There'll be plenty of gas kicking about yet. Um, so you've got to think of all the gas boilers that are still out there. You know, they're still going to need servicing for yeah. years. Well, it's, it's like bailing boilers, for instance. That's worth it. They've got a new model coming out this year. So they're not thinking, <laughs> oh, and so many years of doing away with them. <clears throat> New boiler comes out this year, so a uh, long way to go yet. Yeah. There are other boilers out there, don't I? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I couldn't resist that, sorry. Okay, uh, where are we? Where are we? So Matt, uh, well, I'm guessing it's Matt Neal, uh, but Matt Neal says, did I win? Now, I'm guessing that's as regards to these things. Unfortunately not, Matt, but we will send you a Pair of Rothenberg comments. Remember the best comments as well. We'll <coughs> get to win a pair of gloves. Yeah, absolutely. If you get some good comments into us or good questions, you'll win a pair of gloves. Okie dokie. Where can I get a sensor for the Rotest Electronic 3 combustible gas sniffer? Mine has failed and I can't find them anywhere. From Michael Ferns, gas wise, we're on the Wirral. Okay. So. Well, if it's this year, it'd be what I just. What yeah, just, so I'm guessing you're talking. Here that okay so we're actually working in conjunction with all our analyzing equipment uh with kane so i would guess and i'm pretty sure these guys will tell you if they have any issues or whatever trevor if, trevor if you want to send me a message i'll put you in touch with some good people at kane to sort you out no it's, that's michael is it yeah, michael. Yeah, michael. Yes, i ain't got my glasses on michael <clears throat> drop, drop me a message i'll put you in touch with the right people mate marvelous okay uh, don't forget, as we just said, five sets of them were given away as well. Uh, right, next one from Trevor Green. Are they or will they be rechargeable or even wireless charging? So I'm not sure what we're referring to. Lamp, so. Yeah, so they are um, rechargeable. We have a on the LED front, we have a mixture of rechargeable so head torches. So the head, head, torches. head torches are rechargeable. Yeah, the one you're seeing there in front of Lee, showing you already is rechargeable. Yeah, and then all the smaller ones have got triple A batteries or double A batteries in them. Absolutely. One thing as well, while we're talking about the LED lights, um, both the head torches and motion sensor as well. So these guys, I believe, have put video, sorry, <laughs> videos on in the past. So if you want to save battery life when you're walking out to the uh, the van or the car or whatnot. You can just give it a swipe, save some battery life. Okay. I had a good one from uh, Billy Gordon. Uh, if, if they've said, Who is the hottie? No. Oh, uh, okay. uh, <laughs> so, That'll be <laughs> Sam behind the camera. <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> the it's an old, yes. <laughs> Bald is beautiful. <laughs> Can you tell I'm having trouble trying to get this torch off? I'll pop that under there for now. Okay, is that a question what's just come in there, is it? <laughs> okay, so uh, wireless charging on the torches, if we're talking about torches, I don't know, let's, let's see what happens. I mean, obviously we've done it with phones now, haven't we? So who knows what's coming. The thing for me with wireless charging is you're putting on something that you then have a cable plugged into. Yeah. So why don't you plug the cable into your phone or your torch? Something I don't quite understand. But yeah. It's also not energy efficient at all. There you go. There you there go. You go. Turn around to uh, okay, <laughs> so uh, we've done that one, Trevor. Again, what are the lumens range that you do? So, <clears throat> I'm going to be really professional now. Um, so 800 lumens is the oh, there we go, so the box is here. Marvelous, there you go. So, the battery operated work lamp is 800 lumens, the rechargeable work lamp is oh, 1150. The Combined torch inspection light is 400. We have, which we haven't got here, but we've got two very compact um, slide focus lights. Uh, one of them list price is about six, seven pound. Worth looking at for the pocket, ideal. That's 80, and then we've got the bigger, slightly bigger one, which is 200 lumens. The smaller head torch, we, which we haven't got here, is 200 lumens, and the one I can't turn off over here, 
is 320 lumens. Uh, so as I say, they're all very, very well priced. So please ask in your merchants because there's a lot of manufacturers out there who charge a lot of money for these torches and you'd be nicely surprised. Like I say, to get a work lamp like that, as bright as it is, five, five hours worth of uh, light for 20 odd quid. Mm. That's really good. I, I've had that about three months and somebody asked me next, what I didn't like about it. And I, I have fed this back to these guys. The only little, little downside is- I can't believe you're bringing this up. <laughs> People have asked. I'm really joking, sorry. <laughs> It, it could do with a little magnet on the stand or on the back, uh, but I've actually glued two on myself just because it's a great torch to put underneath commercial boilers and things like that. Because oh, when you go to some yeah. plant rooms, the bull, somebody's always robbed the bulb out of plant rooms, yeah. so to put it high up and yeah, is fantastic. Uh, that's the only downside I've got to that, which mm -hmm. I think, to be fair, for something yeah. under yeah. 30 quid, so, yeah, I, I think it's fantastic. You yeah. can get something, pay 100 pounds for it. That wouldn't last half as well as that anyway. Yeah. yeah. We touched on that again. You'll see <coughs> exactly the same. But the difference is the 800 lumen one is your four AA batteries and your 1150 is your rechargeable USB. And power bank as well. Mm. We, we had a question from Paul Weldon. Um, they said the way technology progresses, do you think soldiering will be used less and less with press guns leading the way over time? I'll say something first. I'm a little bit old school. I think there's a place for all of it, but with all the hot works and things like that coming in or hot works permits or no hot works, I think that uh, it is going, going towards press quite a bit really, but keep buying your super fires. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, um, see that's going to swage them two on front. Yeah. That is all hat, really, you know, you won't get many guys swaging nowadays, but I've done one just recently, I know a lot of guys still do it. It's going to be the same with solder, and it will just be less and less use it, but it will still definitely be there. Mm -hmm. You'll probably find the price of gas will start rocking up in the gas bottles, and then people come away from it a wee bit more. That's what I reckon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just, I just like the press stuff. Uh, I, I've never had a customer in all my years turn around and say, take that press fitting off, I want the solder. I've never had it. Yeah. I don't think you ever will. But for me, <clears> you've already hit the nail on the head when you're in plant rooms. One of the, um, I can't forget the name now, it's down in Derby. They do all the chocolates, Thornton's. Yeah. We did work there for some years. And if we did soldering work in there, they used to have to shut down for two or three days to clean the place down because you've got the flux, the solder, the blowtorch. Yeah. Whereas up until losing the contract a few years back, we could go in with press whilst they were still working. And they loved it. And same again in the hotels, the plant rooms, you've got the smoke clams, the fire hands. Don't need a hot work permit. No. We're pressing. No. So I think I think it depends on the job you do within our industry. I would say. Yeah, absolutely. And you always get on demo days, people looking at press guns and go, ah, oh, you're never going to change my mind and all this sort of stuff. And the the amount of people who do eventually change the mind. And I think that currently there's a place for both. I mean, obviously the Romax four thousand there more on the commercial side, but it does do the smaller sizes. And then you've got a smaller one from our point of view, Compact TT. Um, so there's a big size difference. Uh, just so you're aware as well, that one, if you're not aware, goes up to 35 mil. And the Rockenberg Ascent, the Romax 4000, goes up to 54 uh, mil. So a little bit bigger using the colours. Okay. Uh, Trevor, again, have you got any more questions over there? Or? Yeah, well, go on, mate. Um, we just had Lloyd Stafford. I think you may have asked this before, but you may not have been on the stream at the time. You just said about the press ring adapter clamps. You yeah. said, uh, are they coming soon, or do you know? I would love to say tomorrow, but we really don't know yet, mate. Well, I'll keep you posted. It's in the pipeline. Yeah, definitely. Um, and then we've had a question about uh, calibrating press guns. Mm -hmm. um, how often do you need them doing in this process? <coughs> 20,000 presses. Yes, yeah, so it's 40,000. Both of our guns are 40,000 presses or two years, whichever comes first. Um, obviously, you only need to count for two years, it's counts 40,000 presses. Um, but obviously, some places, you two can obviously speak more on this, yeah. but they insist you get them calibrated every 12 months to sign things off. Yeah, exactly. yeah. Right. basically for your insurance. <coughs> yeah. If you have a leak, let them blow off. You've not had a calibrate, your insurance company will just say, Well, I'm sorry, and that's it. Yeah. Absolutely. From a domestic point of view, then realistically, 40,000 two years. But if you're going somewhere big like the Shard in London, I believe, is a 58 press, 
I dare say there's some uh, legal stuff going on there. And with the Compact TT, the green light there will change to green. Uh, sorry, to red even when it needs um, calibrating. And the lights on there to aid you in your work, they will start flashing on the Romax 4000. Okay. But again, obviously, if you're on gas app or anything, just contact sales at rothenberger.co.uk or ring ourselves and we can obviously point you in the right direction. I had a question about swaging when working oh. with gas. No. Yeah. <laughs> I knew that was going to come up. You can swage on gas, it's fine. It's People say <laughs> it's allowed, it's allowed. People say you can't problem. swage on gas because you're thinning the wall of the copper. But there's no difference to that knowing you bend a piece of copper with a set of pipe vendors. Yeah, exactly. You can't have any gas. So, yeah, yes, pipes. you can. <laughs> yeah, don't do it when you're going to jail. <laughs> But speaking of the swage tool as well, or the expander, as we say, uh, I don't know if you've got one of the older ones, but we have got a new one coming out. Now, some people, if they want to try it, rather than having the sets, they're actually available all the different sizes. So you could buy the tool, which I believe is going to be called the Rolock, or it is called the Rolock, and you can actually buy the head separately. So if you think just doing a little bit of 15, you haven't got to pay for a whole set, you can just put the 15 on there. Okay. Others? Any new tools or gadgets call out? Uh, obviously, the LED range is the big one for me at the moment. Um, I'm trying to think of anything else. Well, I, the the yeah, thing as well, I would talk to uh, so a lot of people don't know about is analyzer. So, yes, yeah, it's rebadged, it's a cane. Um, I've got this great bit of kit. Anybody will tell you about cane, mm -hmm. the service is brilliant as well. But the one thing I really like that stands this one out to buying canes is it actually comes in a box, padded box. And these aren't cheap. So for me personally, if you're shelling out all that money, I want it to come in a padded box, not in a bag. It's just going to be a button about the back of the van. Mm -hmm. but, um, yeah, great bit of kit. You can do, uh, obviously, a gas flow analysis, tightness test, room CO, does everything. It's not got Bluetooth connectivity there. Okay, these are the kits or the cases, Ron. Sorry, hang on a bit. The 458S has. Not according to Key. Not with Rothenburgers. Oh, is it not with the Rothenburgers? <laughs> that's <laughs> what that's what Key has told me. <clears throat> Have you tried it? Yeah, well, no, because I was going we'll to try it afterwards to we'll see. We'll try after then. I could be talking nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll talk about that in the bar later. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you've got. The different row cases for the different analyzer equipment Maybe you've got one of those as well you've got the gas sniffer over there and then you've got obviously the analyzers a couple of other things as well uh, but they all um, um, thermal imaging camera, absolutely yeah. very good one as well but they all click together so if you've got a row max or if you've got one of our new row bends uh, anything like that they will all click together storage and obviously a lot safer than just a bag of wine the other uh, question is Peaky single? <laughs> <laughs> no, happily married, thank you. Uh, that will be mum again, that I'm telling you. <laughs> uh, yeah, and we've got one. <coughs> How did you both get involved in social media? Um, well, me, it was just fitting boilers. So you've, you've heard me already say Valent. We fit Valent boilers, and they said if you do hashtag advance and post your job on Twitter, you would get credits you can use for workway and things like that. So that's how it started. And then people seemed to like what I was doing. So I would do something else rather than boilers and then something else, something else. And then it just grew from there. But I'm pretty much just on Instagram now. Don't think Twitter's what was. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's just grew from there. And it's a bit more enjoyable as well with work. You, well, for me, unless I'm working with dad, you're, you're pretty much by yourself every day so it's just a way of engaging with other people and I don't know it just puts a wee an extra element to it a bit more enjoyable basically so my mine was sort of by a customer um we used to do feedback forms at the end of every job just to see how we could improve <laughs> and one customer's feedback was they nearly didn't use because we didn't have a website um which we took on board and that customer <coughs> a couple of weeks later it actually got his teenage son to build as our first website. We're only on a second website now. And it's because we didn't have somebody, somewhere for them to reference because there was a time in the industry where builders and plumbers and tradespeople would shut down on the Friday 
declare bankruptcy, leave a lot of people owing them money, open on the money under a different name. It's the reason we didn't use you because of this. So we ended up getting the job, we did the job at the website, and then it snowballed from there. We got Facebook, and then people are saying, Oh, you're not on Twitter, you're not on Instagram, you know, whether you stop with it or you know, so it, it just came that it's what the customer wanted to see. And I think we're all probably guilty of it now when you sat on the train, on the bus, or even in a bar, and you'll think, Oh, I need to do such and such, and you'll pick your phone up and it's there. So I think I think you've got to have that social media presence as well now. I think it's helped in a lot of ways. There's obviously a lot of negativity with social media, but I think for myself personally, getting out there, letting people know where I'm going to be or where Rothenberger are going to be at Merchants or wherever, just so people can come and have a look at these things if they want to have to try the new tools. Speaking of the new tools as well, going back to the question about the gadgets, a few things well, I forgot to mention, but the big one for me is the Rovend um, cordless bender using the CIS range. 15, 22, 28 in the set. So yeah, there'll be people out there saying, this oh, I do 15, I do 15 with my hands and all this, absolutely fine. Try this bit of kit and you'll see a difference. It's, it's worth its weight in gold. You can preset the bend angle. And uh, the big one for me is the 28 mil gas runs. Um, 35 is also available as well. That's obviously there's, a, there's only one 35 in the UK at the minute. There is, mate. Who's got that? Oh, stop. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, so the Roadbend 4000 cordless, you guys, you can obviously you say what you You, you did a good video on it on that cross. <coughs> yeah, that if, video if that. you're doing, obviously, it's probably not a great investment if you're not doing much in the way of boilers and doing pipe runs. Because 15 and 22 mil, if you're only doing the other thing, yeah, you would just use a hand bender. But for 28 and 35 in particular, the money you can save on yeah. fittings. It also helps with flow rates and things as well. And what we were using before was a huge tripod that everyone's familiar with. You know, these things weigh a ton. They aren't light at all, and they're big, heavy monsters, basically. And try and get that in the back of your van with a boiler, etc., isn't easy. We are putting that in with a box, cordless, set it up, away you go. Yeah, Chris. People have asked me what my thoughts are. So again, we've had it a couple of months, and I, I would say with it, if you're doing plant room work at 28 and 35, two, maybe three jobs, it's paid for itself. Yeah. It, it really <clears> does. Yeah, absolutely. I think that'd be really good. I think mean, you told me something about saving 200 pounds worth of fittings. Just That's on the last job that we did, yeah. yeah um, and that, all that we're doing, it were a, a 120 plate uh, that we put in onto a boiler. Yeah. You know, just on that alone, a couple hundred pounds. Yeah. I mean, ask your merchants, obviously, I dare say they've all got deals on their own promotion in the UK. List price for about 16, 1700 quid. But like you say, one job, save 200 pounds worth of fittings. Okay. Uh, we've got another one. We've got one more, one more question coming in from uh, Kelly Haynes. Oh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> do uh, do Kane calibrate the Rothenberger analyzers? They do indeed, yeah. So I believe their service is fantastic, as these yeah. guys. Um, they do all our calibration work. Obviously, it's a partnership in conjunction with Kane. Um, people, some people are brand loyal. Some people want to click uh, click cases. That's what we do it for. So, at the end of the day, it's your choice. But yeah, Kane do all the uh, work on it. Thank you, Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> That's my wife, by the way. <laughs> <clears throat> okay. Last question I've got here, uh, and what I'm going to say to this, Neil. Drop me a line, mate. Um, I don't know if you where you saw this, but Anthony.haynes at rothenberger.co.uk says having problems with my Rofrost Turbo 28. Then he freezes for about an hour, then defrosts. I've tried hanging the jaws, leaving the clamps there, uh, up, but it still only lasts one hour. Uh, obviously, we do service and regassing and stuff, but you know, being the Rofrost Turbo 28 can't be that old. Uh, I think they've been out about four years at the most. Um, but yeah, drop me an email, but and uh, and I'll give you some advice if I can. If, you know, obviously if there's an issue, we'll have it back. We've got a bit of a uh, fight over Lee here. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the, the new question. This is Piggy here. In oh God! Oh, no, <laughs> in answer to earlier, no, he's currently not single. Well, I am open to negotiate. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm for a ten. <laughs> That's soon, that's soon bring me back. back. <laughs> right, okay, so that's questions here. Anything from 
yourselves. I think that's uh, I think that's all I can say. I think it would be nice to see a wee bit from Threading Corner. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to go over to Threading Corner now with the big oh, corner. Oh, yeah. oh, right, yeah. Threading so, corner. <clears throat> another item we have <laughs> on the cast range, more for commercial, no doubt. But we've got a new threader what will thread pipe up to two inch uh, on a battery. Uh, Lee's actually got one. Yeah. Really nice bit of kit. And remember, this has been done by a trade specialist. Don't try yeah. it at home, kids. <laughs> <laughs> you know if this don't work. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Pressure's on. Yeah. <laughs> It's cordless as well. Things like so much easier. So easy to actually fit in there as well. So you've got adapters for the smaller uh, die heads, uh, but then the two larger ones you can go straight into the machine, just fits in nice and easy on a battery. Uh, simple. And obviously, we also do the huge machines as well. Two inch on a battery, you know more than me. So yeah, I did the. the yeah. <laughs> deliberately the first job that we actually had it well was two inch and i just wanted to see how well it did yeah um, so it worked fine for us one thing we did invest in using our loyalty points we got the bigger eight amp cap <coughs> battery for yeah, it. yeah. Uh, that was it really but yeah really happy with it brilliant brilliant okay so we're going to uh announce who won the led range on behalf of gas app and i believe chris Lorraine. Chris Lorraine, well done. You've won all the different torches on the LED range. And we'll also have a little scout through the questions uh, on there. No wives are allowed to win. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yes, Is it true? Also... My wife and your wife sent a question. And where's your lass? <laughs> <Boy, laughs> <hell on. laughs> <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we will be giving five sets of gloves away as well. So thank you for joining us, and I hope you've enjoyed it. I've really enjoyed it, to be fair. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you, Lee, Pleasure. for coming down. Right. Anytime, really good. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>